Hello and good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. We're going to whip up a tube. Hope all today have been grand and all the the world. Hello there, everybody. Joined today by Miss Queenie Powell here. Hello. We are going to have a bit of a waffle chat with you, people, tube, and also, as usual, we want to hear your thoughts on this whole thing. So today, uh, this video is going to be entitled something like, you know, how important is practice? I don't really know what I'm going to call it at this point in time. <laughs> something uh, like it's that. something like that. Something like those lines, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll, uh, it'll be down there and it'll mean something. I might just call it elephants are brown. <laughs> I don't know. They're not really, though, are they? They're grey. So, you know, controversial. I don't know. It depends if they've been rolling in mud. True. True. Never assume. True. Um, some vandals could have got into a zoo and spray painted them. They could True. have been neon yellow. <laughs> like in that dream ad the other night about the. Uh, Neon yellow elephant had came and stole my soul away. That wasn't a dream. True. I don't have a soul though. He came. It was always. It, it was already depressed because um, the devils took it. Because uh, I went to the crossroads just there and sold my soul to him to be able to play guitar. Which indeed brings me neatly into the world of practicing guitar, bass, or any instrument you may have. How important is practice? I think we'll both agree on this one, me and Queenie and most of the world, that practice is everything. Yep. But if you love what you're practicing, it's not really practice. Yeah. I don't think, personally. Like, when I when I first started learning guitar and I was playing, like, Green Day and Offspring and then obviously later on, like, Jimi Hendrix and, and Chili Peppers stuff and John's solo stuff and whatnot, it never felt for one minute like I was practicing. Like, oh my god, I've got to sit down and, and learn scales and this, that, and the other. Yeah, it's not a chore. Yeah, exactly. It was it was always something really fun. And again, apologies for noise of construction, renovations. <laughs> Moving on. So it never felt like it was like, oh, I've got to go and play now. It wasn't that. It was a case yeah. of like, I can't wait to play my guitar. I, yeah. Well, I always had a guitar with me, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, how was, how was it for you, Queens, when you first started playing? Was it kind of that same kind of thing? Yeah, I never felt like I had to sit and do it, but it it never felt like a chore. And so I always felt like, oh, I don't really practice. But it took me a few years to realise I do practice. Mm. But there seems to be this thing around practice where it's like, if it doesn't feel like a chore, then it's not counted as practice. But that's yes. not the case whatsoever. Because practice... Everything you do is practice. Every day you speak English, you're practicing English, but you don't feel like it's practice. And the same thing to me goes with playing an instrument. If any time you're picking up your instrument and you're sat doing something, you're practicing. It, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. That that's, that that is worded absolutely perfectly. That is exactly Thank you. it. Because <laughs> I had the same kind of crisis. Um, after a while of playing, I was like. Oh, maybe I should actually sit down and start uh, practicing. This, this guy, I've got a beard hair, this rogue <laughs> beard hair decided to get in my face. I can see uh, Mark's oh, head hi. there. <laughs> so, Just a head coming yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> hang on a minute. I'm just going to close this door just so we don't get too distracted by life here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I should cut down on the noise a little bit. But um, but yeah, I was the same. I had a bit of a kind of crisis. When I went to London, this came up though, because as soon as I went to London, they had they get they gave you like practice regime sheets, and I'd never done this at all. Like mm. like you know, right? Here's your practice regime. You need to spend an hour on theory, an hour on transcribing, an hour uh, blues improvisation, hour rock improvisation, an hour studying jazz, uh, whatever. And I was just like, I don't do that. Yeah. And I started to go, oh God, have I never practiced? Is, have, I, have I just like, just had fun my entire life? And just like, just like my entire guitar, guitar playing life. I was like, have I, have I never actually sat down and practiced? And then and I had a bit of a crisis about it, but then I was like, no, I have. Because how else would I get where I am? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I don't, I don't consider myself a great guitarist or even a good guitarist, but that's me. Uh, but I don't, no, <laughs> I'm allowed to. Um, because, but that's the thing again, is I always feel like I've got more to learn. I love learning new things. Yeah, I, I, I love, do. like, I hate kind of like feeling like it's kind of like going through the motions. I, I can't do that. But um, I always love learning new things. And again, apologies about the <laughs> noise. But again, there's not much I can do about it right now. Um, so, um, so yeah, for, I had a bit of a crisis about that. But then I realised, no, it's, nothing, it's not that that's the 
it's not the fact I don't practice. It's just that it's never felt like it's been yeah. like, oh my god, this is such a chore. Mm. Like you hear, I I had friends who would like, you know, their mum and dad would like make them go to their room and and practice for at least yeah. an hour. And funny enough, they didn't last very long playing yep. an instrument. I had the same thing with people yeah. around me. But the thing is as well, I think everyone's brain is different and mm. maybe you're the type of person that needs a structure. You need to be able to sit down and go, All right, I'm going to sit and do an hour of this, an hour of this, an hour of this. And that makes you happy and it doesn't feel like a chore and it goes in exactly the way it should. But I think it's only certain types of people that work that way and other people might work a different way. Like my brain is quite free form and if I try and force some kind of set structure onto it, I don't work very well that way. Because uh, even I found when I was at school, I actually came out of school when I was about seven or eight, and I learned more coming out of school, for me personally, more coming out of school and being allowed to go, oh, well, what do you feel like learning about today? Oh, I think I'll do this or that. Because my brain was then ready to take on the information. So if you have a brain that works that way, it's kind of important to listen to it and go, well, I really can't make that go in today, so it's okay to practice something else and come back to that if necessary. But obviously there are times where you really have to buckle down and learn something, but that doesn't have to be every day, and that is not the only way that practice works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you... you... I'm exactly the same. I, I can't sit down and go, right, I'm going to de- dedicate the next hour to this, that, and the other. Uh, like, I say, that we, like, like you say, that will definitely work for some people. It won't work for the others. And the key to it is finding how you learn. You know, not not a lot... Yeah, you know, people. Some people learn visually. Some people will learn more audibly. Some people will read more by reading it. Uh, and you look at people like Steve Vai and, and Tom Morello and these guys. Like Steve Vai used to practice like 20 hours a day and he would, he would split it up into segments. I would have shot myself by the end of the day yeah. if I had to do that because it would drive me insane. I just can't do that. It's like, I want to learn that. Okay, so I'm just going to work at that. I can't just then go, right, now I've got to understand the theory and this and the other behind it. And, but why is that called relevant? To that? I don't care about that. I just want to be able to play the bloody thing. But Steve... Well, obviously works in a different way. I'm like you, Queens. In fact, my brain doesn't work in a an academic way. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it kind of comes down to. There's, there's that kind of academia thing uh, that you can either do or you can't. My brother was very much in that way. When we went down to London, my brother Johnny on the base, he just, like, shone. You know what I mean? Like, he, he just got it. He could just do it, and he just got it, and he was just brilliant at it. Whereas me, I was like flying around like a fish with no flippers. I had no idea what was going on because of the way I, I I take things in. And again, obviously being dyslexic and, and autistic and, and, and that as well didn't help. Uh, I didn't know I was actually that at the time. People of the tube, that's, uh, you know, it, it, never been spotted. I was just considered weird. Anyway, um, but, um, but that is it. You have to know how you learn. And I think also as well as like, you know, I think sometimes you have to embrace your limitations, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Like, you know, if if you say, oh, I want to learn to play like Buckethead and three, four, five years down the line, you still ain't Buckethead level, you might have to accept the fact you'll never be. You know what I mean? Like, um... Yeah. I remember when I was into my Ingve Malmsteen phase, I really wanted to be Ingve. And but I couldn't get my head around certain things that he did. Because it's him who's done doing them. And um I think you just have to eventually you just kind of have to accept to kind of like, you know, oh well, I might not be able to do that now, but if I work at it, maybe in a few years or whatever. And that's another thing as well. I remember I'm, somebody had a go at me once for saying this on a video, but I stand by this statement. You wanna be good. Put the years in. This isn't about months, minutes, or seconds, or weeks. This is about years. You know, you can't... Pi- I say this, people of YouTube, but anyway. You can't pick up an instrument, and then in a couple of months, be amazing at it. Unless you're this weirdo here. <laughs> Insert clip of Queenie at 12? Uh, I think I was either 11 or just turned 12. Yeah, I so... Just, yeah. 
Introduce it. Uh, <laughs> probably sounds much more amazing than it is, but I mm-hmm. I did my first gig after I'd been playing about three months, and uh, I played Mothership Slinky, uh, Duality by Slipknot, and uh, Run to the Hills by Maiden, which I taught myself how to do. Uh, well, I didn't know Steve Harris used two fingers for the gallop, so I taught myself to do it with three fingers. And I didn't know Paul Gray used a pick, so I taught myself to do the duality bass line with my fingers. But, yeah. Insert cliff. Yeah. Again. Three months. Yeah. And you're on your own. <laughs> she's about this big, and she's on her own on a stage with uh, an Ibanez ATK bass, which is massive on me, playing these songs. And again, I can't play too much of it, obviously, because copyright. So it'll be like, you know, literally like little... Probably about... Sick. Little segments of them, just like the cool, the cool mental bits. Anyway, I um. Oh. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, I thought you'd put the clip in already. Here's no. the clip. lesson I learned run to the hills because my bass teacher who was actually a guitar player but he said he would teach me some bass um he said he sent me away and he told me to learn uh the monkeys sleepy jean so I went away I learned that but I thought oh yeah I'm gonna learn run to the hills as well so I, I turned back up at the lesson and um I said oh by the way I've also learned this can I play it to you and he goes oh right uh yeah, if you want to, like, because I think he thought I would just totally mess it Bomb. up, but yeah, <laughs> I thought it would be just be a complete mess, and uh, I sat and I played it to him, and by the end of it, he had tears in his eyes, because <laughs> it was that bad, no, yes, because um, <laughs> I'd played it, but the thing is with that, I just, I sat and played and played and played, it didn't come through just me magically going oh yeah I'm, I'm gonna do this oh i can do this yeah yes there's a certain amount some people will learn certain things quicker than others but there's still a lot of effort that goes into that and also there are plenty of things that i can't learn i just happen to my brain just happens to work in that way where i can pick up stuff like instruments relatively quickly especially bass but hmm. There's still a lot of work that went into that and I sat for hours and hours and hours just learning that because I wanted to and I was really focused on it. Because when I want to do something, I can get totally lost in it for an indefinite amount of time. hyper focus. Yeah. But then if I really don't want to do something, it's a massive struggle sometimes to actually sit and do it. Yeah. And that does bring kind of neatly to the fact of, yeah, you will progress differently to everybody else. You, you again, you're not Steve Vai, you're not Buckethead, you're not John Fushanti, Jimi Hendrix, Steve Ray Vaughan, John Mayer, whoever else. You're not me, you're not Queenie, you know, you are you at the end of the day. And, you know, don't get disheartened by not progressing or if you don't feel like you're progressing, you're always, like you, Queenie said about the English language, you're all, or whatever language you speak, you're always learning. It, but because it's happening in kind of... Context. Yeah, context. And also kind of micro steps. It's not like big leaps and bounds. It's kind of almost imperceptible mm. to us. Um, it's like... Um, it's, 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 it's like, you know, you see your face every day. Uh, and say, like, you know, you, you, you knew somebody years ago and they, they saw your face when it was. And then it, like, four years later, they see you again. They go, oh, you've, you, you've changed. To you, you haven't because you see it every day. But to them, you're totally different. And this is why I always say, uh, um, I think I've said it before in a video. It's like when you're practicing and, and, and learning an instrument or starting to play an instrument, or even if you've just been playing it for years, I think it's really important to record yourself. Like, go, okay, this is what I sounded like a year ago. Because if I go back and listen to the tapes I've got of, like, I got a, a four-track tape recorder that only two tracks work on uh, when I'd been playing guitar for maybe just under a year. And I listen to that now and think, that's where I started. 
and that and where I am now, it's like you know, it is is mental. But like to me, it was just this kind of natural progression. It never felt like big kind of leaps and mm. bounds. And that's the thing. So you have to go at your own pace. Don't be of a mind of like you know, by the end of a week, I've got to have learned for the love of God by Steve Vai or yeah. or whatever. It's like that 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 is putting unnecessary pressure on you to learn you won't learn that way you need to be relaxed you need to be enjoying it you need to have fun with it and you need to be calm if you're just like because yeah. how many times have like you or i been learning songs and it's like you know and it isn't going in and you yeah. get angry and then yeah. all of a sudden you can't do it it doesn't help yeah you just screw but it i think that comes back to that accepting your limitations mm. because it doesn't mean go into some like you've got to be careful to not go into something with the mindset of oh I'll probably never be able to do that I'll try but I doubt I can do it that's not a helpful way and that's not gonna help you progress but by accepting your limitations that kind of I have no idea what that noise was screaming child <laughs> but that kind of to me comes down to accepting if you don't learn something as quickly as you think you should be it doesn't matter so what if you don't learn something as quickly as someone else or if it takes you longer than you think it should be it doesn't matter what matters is that you get there at some point Mm. and everyone's different and you've kind of just got to accept that things will happen when they're supposed to happen and at the pace that your brain is able to do it and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever but i think accepting your limitations in that way is not the same as going into something expecting to fail at it because when i learn things and when i first picked up a bass i've always been of the mindset of like well someone else has done that so to me there's no reason why i shouldn't be able to do it even if i can't do it exactly the same as them or in the same time frame as them i just always kind of dive into it with right well there's no reason i shouldn't be able to do it so let's see where we end up and i think that's really important (coughs) and another thing i think as well is even if you can't sound the same as your idol it doesn't matter because to me every individual person has got something to give that is them you don't have to sound like someone else and whatever is in you is not better or worse than anyone else but it's you and it's equally as important as whatever your idol has to give so it's really important to me to explore your own kind of what one how your influences progress through you and how they come out in you because your influences won't always come out the same as what they are but to where that leads you as your own individual player as well so Hmm. But it's that age-old thing of, uh, like John Mayer said, you sound like yourself when you fail to sound like your heroes. And that is everything. People have had a go at me for years for trying to replicate John Frusciante or Jimi Hendrix or whoever else. But the thing is, it's leading me down a path that A, feels right to me, B, is right for me, and C, is getting me where I want to go with the instrument. And that can't be wrong. That can't be wrong. I don't care what these people... Oh, you, just, you should just be yourself. I've got no influences and I just sound <laughs> like myself. I bet you're boring. That's impossible. Yeah, no one is original. It's all been done. You think it's not been done? It's been done. It, I, I, that's the way I feel about it at this day. And I don't... I'm not I'm not approaching the guitar with the idea of I'm going to reinvent the guitar. I don't care. You know, I just want to play music. I'm not out to recreate or create my own um, genre of music or or break down the barriers that I don't think are there anymore. Uh, It's all been done. My, I'm here to make music and because I love playing music. And um, so that's, that's what I do. And so it's, uh, keep (laughs) keep hearing voices. It's ghostly. It's nice. People (laughs) outside. Anyway, uh, somewhere there's kids about, there's construction. It's going crazy. But yeah, but you've got to be you and you've got to learn what you want to learn and you've got to be easy on yourself when you're learning these things because it won't all come in one fell swoop. It won't come in a week. It won't come in a month. It won't, it might not come in, it might not come in six years. It might take longer. You know what I mean? But the, 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 the fun part is the journey. Yeah. Like I, I, I love 
watching people start their journey and watch them get better and better because I remember how I felt when I was doing it. I, I, I loved it. I loved every second of learning a new... Oh, I'm going to learn that song today. And at the end of the day, if I could play that song, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. You know, I remember learning By The Way, the By The Way album, it's in entirety. I remember learning, like, uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic in its entirety. And all these songs, like, you know, it was just an amazing feeling of co- accomplishment. I'm like... Because, again, up to that point uh, of playing guitar, I felt my life was just a, basically a, a waste of a life. I, I basically I felt like I had no purpose being alive uh, because of what had happened at school and whatnot. Uh, so I had, uh, so to all of a sudden go from that to feel like, oh, actually, I'm actually doing something. And then to be able to kind of like eventually create and write music and release music for people, it makes me feel like I'm actually worth something instead of just kind of feeling like I'm just this useless sack of skin. Which is not true anyway. No, but that <laughs> happens all the time. Um, but, but again, it is. Limitations are there for a reason. And it's like what John Lennon said, limitations breed innovation. And that's very true. If you can't do something, you'll find a way. And in finding a way to do that, you'll probably find your own way of doing it. And it won't be like, yeah, like Queenie said, it won't be like your heroes. It won't be like Joe Bloggs down the road who can do it. It'll be your way. And that is everything. Like, learning to do things your way. And, um, again, it's all about the years. It's all about putting the years in. I, I, like, and a lot of people say, oh, it's this many hours. Yeah, well, that's, that, adds, that equates to a, at least a year yeah, or 10, maybe 000, two. Yeah, 10,000 hours it equates to years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, this is, that's the thing. It's years. You know, I, I get frustrated when people come to me and they say, oh, I've been playing guitar for six months and I can't do this. Well, of course you can't. I've been playing for two years, but I've never done this before, and I can't do it. Well, of course you can't. I, I remember once I um, under I, I'd been watching my friend Charlie play uh, at the at the Cobble, at Cobbles Bar in Laugh, and they were doing reggae songs, and I was determined to get my reggae playing better because um, being a rock player, blues guy, I'm always pushing. Reggae isn't about that; it's about pulling back and relaxed. And so what I did is I put on this uh, concert of Bob Marley live every night for literally, crikey, four, five, maybe even six months, every night. And I just played along to the songs. No solos, just rhythm. Just playing the rhythm, just trying to get that feel. And um, but and I just worked out and worked out and worked out and worked out. And then the year after that, Charlie came back to Cobbles Bar and I got up and played with him again. And um, normally I only did the blues and the rock and roll songs with Charlie. But weirdly, 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 this year he wanted me to play some reggae songs with him, which I had never done. I only ever played the Jimi Hendrix songs or the rock and roll songs or the blues songs. Didn't do the reggae stuff. And he said, oh, we're going to do uh, One Love. And we're going to do No Woman, No Cry. And we're going to do Red, Red Wine. And we're going to do all this. And I was like, okay. And I got through these reggae tracks and at the end of these songs, I remember Charlie just put his arm around me and he said, he's from where I'm from. And he said, like, you know, he's not from here. And that to me is one of the biggest compliments I've ever received in my life. To be able to, like, hold my own in that situation with these extremely experienced reggae musicians and blues musicians and, and stuff like that. They're, they're way more experienced than, like, you know, I am still. You know, they've been there, done that. I haven't quite got there yet. You know, it's it was like, you know, yes, practice. Practice pays off. But again, you have to have fun with it. You have to enjoy it. If you're going to practice and you're not going to enjoy it, it ain't going in. It'll, boing, it'll be like you got a bulletproof vest on. It'll just ricochet off you. You have to enjoy it. You have to learn what you want to learn. I get sick of these people saying, you've got to learn it this way. You've got to learn this. You've got to learn this. Otherwise, you're no good. No, you learn what you want to learn. If you just want to learn ACDC all day long, then you learn ACDC all day long. It's not anybody else's journey. This is your journey. This is your life. This is your road to walk, not theirs. You walk yours. And again, this whole thing of like people saying all the time, like, you know, oh, well, you shouldn't. Oh, yeah, I've got no influences. I'm, I, am, I just sound like me. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you like music, if you play an instrument, that means you like music. And if you like music, that means you've heard something you like, which uh-huh. means you have an influence. Yeah. No one goes through life without influences. You listen to Eric Clapton, you can hear B.B. King, you can hear Buddy Guy. 
you listen to Jimi Hendrix, you can hear Buddy Guy and B.B. King and Albert King. You listen to modern day guitarists, even the kind of crazy guitarists like Polyphia. Who do you hear in there? Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai, Buckethead, Joe Cetriani, um, Steve Lukather, uh, Paul Gilbert. If a list goes on, mm. you know, yes, they're doing it in a way that's different, but it's still the same and it's still an influence. And then you go to Steve Vai, who's, uh, or Yngwie Malmsteen, influence, Richie Blackmore. Richie Blackmore's influence, the blues guys, Muddy Waters, it all comes back to the blues. It always, always comes back to the blues guitarists. But everyone's got an influence. Steve Ray Vaughan sounds like an amalgamation of loads of guitarists. Stevie just had his own slant on things, which again, he got by trying to be Albert King or Freddie King or BB or any of these other blues guitarists. You know, he got it from trying to be them and failing and in so doing became Steve Ray Vaughan. And I do, I get really bent out of shape when people have a go at other people, uh, me included, when they say, oh, you shouldn't try and be a clone of somebody. No one's trying to be a clone of somebody. They're trying to find their way. And that takes time. If you found yours, great. Go and do what you want to do. But don't start telling people just because you found your Easter egg that, you know, they should go and find theirs. If they can't find theirs just yet, give them the chance. You know, there's far too much pressure in this day and age from stupid internet trolls who think they know better in one way or another to go, you you should be doing this or you should be doing that and I can't believe it. One person had a go at me once because I don't shred. Oh, it would have been so much better if you'd shredded over that backing track. No, it wouldn't. Because then that wouldn't have been me. It wouldn't have been mm. true to me or what I was trying to do. And it, it, that person actually unsubscribed because I didn't shred. They actually subscribed to the channel to tell me they didn't like that I didn't shred and then told me they were unsubscribing. Good. <laughs> Doors there. Close it on the way out, please. People... Actually, forget it. I'll close it, bolt it, lock it, make sure you don't come back in. <laughs> but that is a, that, that is the point. Sorry, Quince. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, people seem obsessed with making rules that mm. aren't actually there. Yes. And I think part of it comes down to, like, you're born and then you're forced into places that are very regimented and then people just seem to be easily bent into the idea that everything must have a rule and everything must be done in a certain way. But look at how many different types of people there are in the world. You don't get all of those different inventions, all of those different things in the world, different jobs, different personalities, by everyone all doing everything the same way, thinking mm. in the same way, and everything being regimented in the same way. Yes, having those people that are regimented are really important, but they're equal. everyone is equally as important no matter how it, which way it is that your brain works and what kind of a personality you are. You need all of them because that's what the world that's what makes the world you can't have you can't move the world forward if everything is the exact same thing mm. and you can't progress no that's exactly it it's like just because one person learns academically steve let's let's <coughs> let's take steve again steve Vai. he learned hour intervals learning improvisation theory blah 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 all that way he learned that way now he can't then force that on somebody like who like like us for instance who can't learn that way because we'll never progress and eventually we would quit mm. that's what happens if you're fo like you know how many people like hate what they do and eventually don't do it anymore if they if they just if their heart's not in it what happens oh they get disenchanted disencha and they quit it eventually and the same thing go yeah, and, and it's the number one thing with an instrument and the thing about an instrument as well as you you know or or anything really is you've got to put effort in to be good at anything. Mm. But, you know, just because you learn a certain way or you think this, you think, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, uh, this is a certain way, because there's plenty of these people, people with you, we know out there, trolls mainly, or very opinionated people, uh, who believe this is the way I did it, so that's the way everyone should do it. No. <laughs> just no. But you can't force that upon people, so you always stay true to you. You stay true to what you want to learn, how you want to sound, what you want to learn, when you want to learn it, and pace yourself. <coughs> Do not just rush into things willy-nilly. 
you know, if you're not ready to do it. And you will know if you're ready or you're not ready. You just have to take your time. And again, it takes years. I don't care what anybody says. Don't fool yourself into thinking like, you know, in six months, I'm going to be the next Jimi Hendrix. It's not going to happen. You know, Jimi Hendrix wasn't even Jimi Hendrix after six months. You know, he was nothing after six months, like most of us are, apart from weirdos like that. But <laughs> yeah, there are, but, but again, <laughs> like, yeah. God, I think I, Yeah, I think I was about to say, people do learn different things. Like, yeah. after three months, I could barely play, but Greeny could. But that's the thing. Mm. No one's the same. No one learns at the same speeds. No one's going to learn at the same tempos. Uh, yeah, you're all going to, everyone's going to learn differently. So you've got to identify and learn how you learn and figure out how you how it how it appears to you um uh, yeah sorry also accept the fact that you'll never be done learning mm. like going back to what you were saying about uh, you wanted to get better at reggae and, mm. and you just sat and played the rhythm side i'm kind of on the flip side of that where i've always been in situations where obviously being a bass player i don't really get to solo <laughs> Like in in the situations I've been in up thus far, I've not really been in the position where I get to solo or go off on a tangent. I I'm there to be the rhythm, which I love anyway because I love bass and I always know where I sit in a situation. But I've always wanted to get better at the kind of soloing side of it and making being able to make a piece of music as a solo that is actually enjoyable. And I've only been doing that for f about a year now, and I've been playing 11 years, and I still feel like I could improve at that. And I'm still very much at the beginning of that journey. Like even on my own YouTube channel, when I go back and I look at like my first video, the jam I did in that, I was, a I'd never done it before. I was a total beginner. And then looking at some of the ones I've done more recently, they're, they're worlds apart. And although they're still not where I would like them to be and I'm still not as comfortable or as free and I can't always hit the notes that I am hearing because I just don't have the experience of doing it yet, I, I have a tendency to get frustrated at that and go, oh, well, I should be able to do it because I've been playing this song, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I've been playing that long, but I've never done that before. I, I'm a total newborn when it comes to doing that kind of thing. So I think even if you're at a stage and you're playing where you feel you've been playing for a long time, if you find something that you could improve on or that feels weird or difficult to you, you don't have to be hard on yourself because everything is kind of activating a different part of your brain. like it's not all the same feeling like learning to solo is not the same as learning a song and it's not the same as writing a song because it, it's just it feels like totally different parts of the brain to me and mm. i just think it's important to accept however long something takes it doesn't matter no matter how long you've been playing yeah exactly um i'm just recently getting into learning tool uh and it's the same thing like queen like, I, I was learning uh, Vicarious, wasn't I? And I was like, I should be able to do this. I should be able to do it. And I couldn't get my head around the rhythm. It's took me a good few, well, about a week or so to get it, hasn't it? And I'm still not 100% there with it. But I've been learning, like, Vicarious and, 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 and some other Tool songs. And I was like, I should be able to do this. You know, I've been playing 20 years. I should be able to do this kind of thing. And I can't because I've never done it before. Of course I can't do it. Like, yeah. like you said, improvisation. Yeah. I am basically, I am a basically a beginner again, and I love it because I'm like, yeah. something new to learn, and it makes me so happy. Like so, yeah. some like, I, I I love that feeling of going, oh yeah, here we go. And again, it is you you you're totally right with the thing of embrace the fact you're never gonna stop learning. You're never gonna be, you're never gonna know it all. It's impossible. You'll yeah. never, you'll never, you will be learning about music and your instrument until the day you die mm. it is the way it goes and uh, to me that is beyond exciting yeah that is literally one of the coolest things in the world and you just can't get any better um <coughs> but um but yeah that but that's again just take your time 
Mm. Your time, not anybody else's. Sad if somebody says, oh, you should be at this level by now. No, if you're not ready, you're not ready. But you've got to put the hours in. You've got to put the practice in. But again, if it's not a chore, it don't feel like practice. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've, I've never picked up the guitar and gone, oh, God, I can't be arsed. You know, there has not been one moment where that's ever happened because every time I pick it up, I'm like, right, what can I do with it today? And yes, technically, certain things of my guitar playing, I've stopped them because they're where I want them to be right now. In a year's time, months' time, weeks' time, whatever, they might that might change. I might want all of a sudden just become like a jazz guitarist or whatever, you know, and I might need to learn different techniques. Uh, but at this point in time, I'm where I want to be because... I want to focus more on the feel side of playing than I do the technical side of playing. I've, I've done the technical side of playing for, to, uh, to the limit of what I want to, where I want to be. I can do what I need to do technically and I don't need to push that any further right now. Again, in the future, that might change because, again, being humans, we all change. You know, we change every, every day. You know, there's always something different. There's always something else you want to do and this, that, and the other. There's always something like, you know, there's always another guitar you want to play, or a bass you want to play, or a drum kit you want to play, or an amp, or a pedal, or whatever. You know, we all have the right and the um, desire for change. You know, and change, as Rick Mayer would say, is a constant. And that is very true. So you've got to kind of like just go at your own pace. And like I think you said to Queen, so along the lines of like, like, you know, oh, well, you know, I can't play that now, mm. but I'll work at it. Yeah. And eventually you get, you do get there. Yeah. But again, sometimes it just takes time. And again, it's all about putting the, hour, the hours in. 15 minutes a day is enough to keep you progressing. If you played 15 minutes a day for an entire year, you will keep going up and up and up mm. and up and up. And just sitting with your instrument and understanding it and then understanding you as well. That is another key point of learning anything, I think, is... <laughs> understanding yourself and how you learn uh how things go in because uh, for me uh, i think it's the same view you well. we're very visual mm. if i see something i can learn it and if i hear something i can learn it trying to read about it or look at tab or look at music forget it it ain't gonna work again i can't do tab because i'm dyslexic so the numbers jumble music jumbles uh, <coughs> i'm the same way yeah. all jumbles for yeah. me Reading, I can't, you know, I, I, I have to read books <clears throat> into double figures to remember the first chapter because it doesn't go yeah. in. Uh, and again, it's it, that's to do with my dyslexia and, and my brain. That's the way my brain is. And again, that's the thing. That's the way I have to learn. That's the way I have learned. And again, I've taught myself how to play the guitar. You know, no one, I, there was no one around here who could teach me how to play the guitar the way I wanted to play. So I taught myself. Um, and... You learn how how you progress. You learn how you progress. And again, it's not about what people want <coughs> for you to play. It's about what you want to play. This Again, this is your road to walk. It ain't theirs. I can't walk Queenie's improvisational bass solo road for mm-hmm. her. I can help her out at, 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 at crossroads or forks in the road and say, well, that'll do that, that'll do that. Because again, my experience through impro- learning improvisation will be able to give me that ability to guide her but it's up to her to put the effort in it's mm. like it's like anyway anyway i can teach anyone to play the guitar but it's not down to me if they can't yeah it's down to them i can teach somebody to play this guitar lick but if they to, if they go around and, and try and do it once and then say i can't do it and then have a go at me for it now mm. that's that's on that's on them all you can do when you teach someone is arm them with the tools that Ooh. they need and the knowledge and the rest is up to them. You can't do it for them. Mm. But I think as well it's really important to not compare yourself to other people because, like, you can kind of get stuck in this thing of, oh, well, that person was just instantly really good at that and I'm not, so I'm obviously crap. But the same goes either way because for as good as I am, like, with tall stuff, that's not been a problem for me but that's because like i grew up listening to that my favorite album since i was about two or three was war of the worlds which is very proggy and um i remember i was sat in the car with my mum and obviously there's a lot of like instrumental breaks in that album and i was just sat there about three two two or three years old 
and everything drops out and the, this acoustic guitar comes in. I, get, I go to, went to my mum. That guitarist is really clever because he knows exactly when to come in. And my mum just kind of went, what? <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's just because my brain w- works in a way that that kind of music, it just goes in. It, I don't see it as a technical thing. But for as well as I can feel that music, I can't count it for the life of me. That's something I'm just awful at. So I have to do it from like a visual and feel based thing. Mm. But for as good as I am at any of that, the stuff that Dave does, I'm I'm still totally new to learning. And it it it's just different people, different circumstances when you've been brought up and just the different way that you work it doesn't Mm. make you any better or any worse so it's really important to not compare yourself even in like little micro sections of oh well i'm good at everything else but not that it doesn't matter you'll get it when you're supposed to get it and i think if you put the effort in and you really want it like not to get all la-di-da but i think the universe generally will hear that and go okay like look at when dave learned the reggae stuff and then all of a sudden what happened Mm. he got asked to play on the reggae stuff Mm. i think only time yeah that was the only time as well just to just interject yeah that was the only time i played reggae with charlie i never played it with him again Mm. and i played with him another two or three times um two two times a cobbles once in london and I just played the reggae, uh, sorry, the, the, the blues and the rock and roll stuff. He never had me play reggae again. It's well, weird. Yeah. Sorry. So, well, no, no, it's fine. That's it. I think whatever it is, it will hear you. If you if you really want something and you're putting the effort into it, th- whatever it is will hear you and it will help you and it will give you certain opportunities that it when you're ready... Because I think it's really easy sometimes to get impatient and go, well, I want that, and it's not happening now. Why is it not happening? Yes. And then you kind of just either give up or you stop putting the effort in or you just feel really frustrated and defeated, which I am guilty of myself. I think everyone is. Yeah. And I think it's important to trust that everything will happen if it's supposed to happen and Mm. when it's supposed to happen. You can't rush these things and you learn at the pace you're supposed to learn it will go in when it's supposed to go in and there'll be a reason for that Mm. and it's just important to kind of trust that and not get too disheartened by it but also if there's something you want to happen but it doesn't happen then it obviously wasn't supposed to and if it had happened it perhaps wouldn't have been what you wanted it to be in which case you've not lost anything in it not happening so Mm. Exactly, and again, yeah, again, it and like you said, it, it's all about just being you. Just do what, yeah, do what you want to do. And again, yeah, you, you, it will, it will happen. And again, I, 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 I do believe in that, that whole thing of like, you know. I always talk about music, as in music. It's, it's not just kind of like what I'm playing music. It's music talks to me, and it does. And uh, like I say, I, and I've said this as well before. I'm a marionette. I'm I'm not anything other than that. I'm just a puppet to music. And this is the thing is like, you know, music needs to know it can rely on you to put across what you're doing. Now, if you're phoning it in, it'll be like, Meh, and it'll go away. But if it sees you as a, um, you can do what it needs of you, it will feed through you. I always think of people like Noel Gallagher for things like this, because, um, I remember this story, uh, Noel got given a 1960s Gibson Les Paul from Johnny Marr. When, 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 before Definitely Maybe, um, a, a Noel was using an Epiphone Les Paul and it wouldn't stay in tune. And Johnny went down to see him, He'd, he, he liked them, Johnny Marr did. And he went down to see him at the, like, I think the boardwalk or something in Manchester. And uh, he he said he noticed that Noel basically was like constantly tuning the guitar to, just to keep it in between songs, and it'd go out and progressively go worse and worse and So he was like, I need I need a better guitar than that. He, you know, but Noel's on the dole, man. He ain't got a job. He can't afford to go out and buy a Gibson Les Paul. That's not the 1960s. 
you know, so he's got this epiphone Les Paul, which apparently, according to Noel, bought off a crackhead in his apartment building. Um, and um, it, Johnny went home, and obviously Johnny Mars got a lot of guitars. Um, and he, he said, oh, I'll give him this Les Paul. He likes Les Paul. So he, gave it, he picked out his 1960s Les Paul, which he'd done loads of Smith stuff on, and he gave it to Noel, and Noel picked it up, went back to his apartment, sat down with the guitar. First song he played on it was Slide Away. Now, that song came out of that guitar for Noel, because Noel was open to it. Didn't come out for Johnny. And this is the thing, like things again, things happen when they're meant to. That guitar was meant to go to Noel, and Noel was meant to write that song. Slide Away is epic as well. It's like one of my favourite Oasis songs. And um, it's a classic. But Johnny said sometimes, I'm like, you know, why, why did that guitar give it? Yeah, you know, why did that, why did that guitar give Noel that song? Why didn't he give it to me? I wanted that song. But that's the thing; these things they 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 come to you. And again, you have to be worth it. You know, it's it's like going for a job interview. They're not going to hire you if you're just going to sit on your ass all day and do nothing. You know, they want to know you're committed to the job you're going to do. You know, if 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 you if you're going to go and, and and be a plumber, but you don't know. You know, you don't know how to do anything about it. They're not going to hire you to do that job. Music is exactly the same. Music will not channel through you if it knows it can't get what it wants from you. You know, and music, you know, it's going to ignore that. it. It's going to, yeah, it's just going to ignore it. It's just going to, yeah. so you've got to be open. And again, this this comes down to think of like, you know, it, it's, it's, music is a higher power to me. Mm. Um, you know, I, I know it is for a lot of people as well. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going mm, whatever, but I don't really care if that's what if that's what they think. That's fine. To me, music is a massively high power thing, and again, it's the reason I'm alive. If it wasn't for music and the guitar, I wouldn't be alive right now, sat with Queenie talking mm. to you. It just wouldn't be a thing. I'd be very, 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 very dead by now. It's as simple as that. So, to put it very bluntly, so. Of course I'm going to owe... I, I, I literally owe my entire existence to music. So, of course I'm going to give to it. You know, no matter what it wants, I will give it to it. And I will push and push and push. And I will practice and I will work every day I can on the guitar to get better at what I do. And that is the point. Music will will come to you when... You know, and that's when these little shards... My friend Ian put it really well once. He, he said, music does this. It's out here. It does this. And then one day it goes vroom, like that. And all of a sudden, everything makes sense. But then eventually, over time, it does this and goes back out here again. And then a couple of months or a week later or a year later, it'll, vroom, it'll come back together. But then it'll break apart again. And it's constantly doing this. It can't be that all the time. It's impossible. Uh, you know, you'll get writer's block. You'll get kind of like fatigued. You'll get kind of tired with doing one thing. You want to do something else. But um, it's all about variety and doing what you want to do at the end of the day. But mm. practice is everything. But again, if it if it doesn't feel like a chore, it ain't practice. If it's just you've got to sit down, you've got to play through some songs, you've got to learn songs. <laughs> How cool is that? You know, yes, it's a job. Music is a job. Playing guitar, bass, drums, of course, of course they're a job. You know, life's a job. You know, to get through it, it's, it's a job. But it's about the journey and enjoying it and just loving where you're going with it and just loving what you do you know and um and just and been been true to yourself not bending to what's trendy or what's popular or what people have told you you should be doing it's if you don't want to do what they're telling you to do don't do it you don't have to be true to you learn what you want to learn all right i think i've spoken enough <laughs> no i like it but yeah, ignore all the random, stupid, unnecessary rules that people mm. think should exist. Yeah, You've got to do what feels them. right for you and you'll know it, you'll feel it. You've just got to be open to... Li- you've got to hear it. You've got to listen and be open to hearing it. And exactly. It's there. Yeah. So. It, music will find you if you're worthy, but you've got to prove to it. It's like anything. You've got to prove you're worth it. You know, you can't just chance it yeah you can't phone things in people will see it and music's no different it's cleverer than we are it's way cleverer than we are you can't fool music 
you can't fake it. It'll just go. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> it will. It'll just go. I don't think so. So you got to give it everything. And again, you'll progress differently. You might again limitations. There's all these points that we've spoke about today. That I hope is uh, is all making some kind of sense. But there's all these points. But again, it all comes down to technically practice. Yeah. You know, technically that is the word. It, it, that, that is literally the word, but it doesn't necessarily mean that academia class, you know, that uh, sterile way of saying practice. You need to practice. It's picking up your instrument, whatever it is, or even not your instrument, or whatever what you want to do, and just working at it and loving it for what it is, and just keeping going and never stopping. And eventually, yeah, things do start happening. You know, it's hard to believe it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like you say, you know, it, everyone's guilty of going, ooh, I can't do it, that will never happen. You haven't given it enough time, obviously. You know, you do. You need to keep trying. At the beginning of this week, when I was learning vicarious, I thought I was like, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm never going to be able to do it. Now I can. I knew you would. <laughs> yeah. But you see, in my head, I was like, I'll never be able to do it. I can't do it. And I still get that now. I've been playing 20 years. Yeah. And I still might. Um, that's not good enough, Dave. I I get it as well. Like, yeah. With, with the bass solo stuff, where mm. I'm like, I want that note to be there, and I just can't get it to go there. Or I want that sound, and I can't physically figure out how to make that sound. And I want this, and I don't know how to do that. And it gets really, really frustrating. Mm. But then every so often, everything will come together. It's like ah. That was great. That's actually... That's it. That's how I wanted it to be. And that's how music wanted it to be. And I could do that for music. I was capable of doing that. Mm. And I'm still very much in that place where it's very... Kind of like, I can't do it every time. And that really frustrates me. But I'm aware that, one, I've been doing it a very short amount of time in this way. And two, it's just kind of... It's one of those things I'm, I'm not... Necessary. I've never done it before, so I'm not necessarily going to go. Yeah, I can do that now, because it's just a totally different thing. Yeah. And like, I've always been able to feel music, but that doesn't equal always necessarily being physically capable of doing what it wants me to do and just magically knowing. I still have to put the effort in to figure out how to do what it's telling me to do. And sometimes I can get it across, and sometimes I can't. And that can get really upsetting, upsetting, yeah. yeah. But it's just one of those things. And I'm kind of, the more I do it, I'm sure the more capable I'll get. And the same Mm. thing goes for anybody. Yeah. So you just got to carry on. Yeah, it is. It's it's all about just keep walking. Don't stop to look at the scenery. You keep walking and you eventually get somewhere. It is it is like walk it is like then no different to walking down the road, you know. You, you you get somewhere different every time, you know. And things are never the same. Change happens. But it's it's amazing. And it's worth it. You just gotta keep going. You know what I mean? And again, if you're not happy and it feels like a chore, then you ain't learning the right thing for at that point in time. You've gotta find what works for you at that point in time. Otherwise you will stagnate and you will it will get stale and you will get disenchanted and then you get stuck in a rut. You need to change things up. You know, it's like, what do you want to learn? What do you want to do? What do you want to sound like? What do you want to play like? You know, just... And and also, again, you can't phone it in. You give it 100% all the time. You know, you can't ever just go, oh, I'll just give it half I'll sit today. Nope, you won't. You you can't do that. You will lose it. You know, it's a perishable thing as well, music is. Mm. Like everything. It goes away if if you don't work at it. So, yeah, that's it. But, yeah, anyway, I think we'll uh, wrap that up there. But, yeah, but that's but that's what it comes down to. I know, that's why I wanted to do this video, and I'm, I'm glad Queens is here as well, because it just gives another perspective as well. And uh, we'll do another trio talks at some point as well. It might have already happened. I don't know when it, by the time this video goes out. But uh, we're going to get John Joe's opinion on this as well, because John Joe is a prolific practiser. But John Joe is very much, he's different in the tours in a way yeah he, uh, he's more of the he can sit and read books and yes he, he's amazing at taking it in mm. i don't know actually don't know anyone who is that capable no. other than john joe no the man's a genius yeah um but like but we'll we'll talk to him about that in the next trio talks but yeah um but again hope 
this has all made sense, Pure Chair. I hope it's been an enjoyable uh, video if you've made it this far. Thank you very much indeed. Um, but yeah, so uh, again, walk your walk your path. You know, it's, it's, it's your instrument to learn your way and find how you want to play it. Not how somebody else tells you how you want to play it, what you want to play. And if people get stuck in a rut when they're kind of going over the same ground over and over again and they kind of start to stagnate because it's like, well, you've done enough of that. That's the universe and music telling you to move on. <laughs> you've done enough of this. <laughs> move on. It's like, you know, it's like eating chocolate cake all day, all day, every day. Yes, it's fantastic. But eventually, my God, do you want something else? And that's the way it is. You can't just keep eating it because you go, oh, this, this is starting to taste horrible now. Mm. You know, you, you've got to have variety. You've got to move on. And that's the way it is, you know. And uh, invariably, you just got to find something different. Again, for me, started with punk, and then it went to Jimi Hendrix and John Fushanti, and then it went to, in, you know, Ingve Malmsteen, back to Jimmy and John, um, and then all sorts of doing things. Reggae, blues, ska, uh, indie music, you know, heavy metal, uh, thrash metal. I've been, you know, I've been through every genre. Uh, Django Reinhardt, jazz, uh, you know, uh, I, I love African guitar playing, stuff like that. Yeah. Just sort of one thing as well mm -hmm. uh, that we didn't mention that I think mm -hmm. should be mentioned is like Go. finding things that you don't like to learn. Mm. Like not every technique under the sun, you're not going to want to do it. Yes, like very there's, true. There's certain techniques on the bass that I've tried to learn, like double thumb technique is one of them. And I just, I physically hate the way it feels. I don't enjoy playing it and I just have never not once had the desire to actually do it in fact the feeling of it actually makes me feel sick which is like a bit like dramatic it. but I just I, I hate the way it feels on my thumb I find it an aggravating feeling mm. and I've never had the desire to learn it and that's fine maybe well, I'm open to the fact that maybe one day in the future it'll become my favorite thing in the world I mm. might absolutely love it one day but it's fine to not want to learn every single technique under the sun. It's just about finding what you do like and what you do want to learn. Exactly. Same thing with me with sweet picking. I hate sweet picking. I hate that... Yeah. That noise. It sounds like somebody being sick to me. And I've never like Again, same... I used to be able to do it. I, I, when I was in London, I learned to do it and my guitars were set up to be able to do that kind of thing. And I just hated the feel of it. It, it, it felt wrong. Funny enough, I do kind of do sweet picking every now and again, but it's slow. So yeah. technically, technically not sweet picking. It's just kind of like arpeggiating, basically. But it's the patterns that I love. But doing it fast, blah, 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 I hate it. It, it does. It, it physically aggravates yeah. me. It gets in my head, and I'm just like, oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> uh, another technique I learned to do when I was on was like eight finger tapping as well, like this. I could I could actually use eight fingers to tap, and it was aggravating. It drove me up a wall. <laughs> I remember being sat on my bed in my apart in my flat in London, playing this eight finger tapping piece, going, I physically want to rip my fucking ears off. <laughs> like I can't stand the noise, and I can't stand how this feels. So I can't do that anymore, and I don't care to. Again, like you said, in a year's time, I might want to. Or sweet pick, or this, that, and the other. But again, again, open. But again, be aware of what you are now in this moment, and where you want to get to, because that'll help you along the way. Yeah, awesome point. That is a very awesome point. I'm glad you brought that back up, actually, because that is something that I didn't think about at all. But yeah, that is very true. Yeah. yeah you don't have, if you don't want to learn it, don't learn it. Oh, you need to learn how to tap. I don't want to. Well, you need to, otherwise you're not going to be any good as a, a guitar player or a bass player. If you can't tap, I mean, what are you? Yeah, but I don't want to. Oh, fine, whatever. That person needs to get stuffed. And you need to go, don't want to learn it, don't feel the need mm -hmm. to. Yeah, if you don't want, if you just want to bash out power chords like Billy Joe for the rest of your life, do that. It doesn't, you don't have to be Mr. Hey, look at me, I'm amazing. I can sweep, pick and tap at a million miles a second and I can play a hundred million notes of Fly of a Bumblebee in world record time. <laughs> you don't have to be that person. That's not what music's about. Mm. That's not music, in my opinion. It never mm. has been. Music isn't but about showing off and if, stuff like that. If that is something that you enjoy for the fun of it, there's nothing wrong with that well, either. Well, that is a but fair point. Yeah, I mean, if you do enjoy being that, then yeah, go for it. Yeah. That's a good or, point, Or actually. like, just for the fun of... Oh, I feel like learning 
world record speed like <laughs> fight the bumblebee just because it's fun and then there's nothing wrong well, with that. Yeah, that's, but... that, that's actually a good point. Yeah, I mean, if you're enjoying it, yeah. go for it. But again, if you don't want to do it, don't do yeah, it. Exactly. There's no pressure on you to be that. Yeah. If you want to do it, go. Go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And do it the best you can. But if you don't want to do it, and don't feel pressured into. Yeah. You don't have to play guitar fast to be a good guitarist. You don't. You don't have to shred to be a good guitarist or a bass player. You don't or, have or to whatever. have the best technique in the world. No, you to don't. have the best feel in the world and, Exa- and vice versa. Exactly, exactly. Anyway, but yeah. So I anyway, hope that's made sense. Uh, anybody who went into this video, thank you very much indeed. If you like the channel, uh, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Link to that description box below. Links to Queenie's channel is in the description box below. Um, yeah, other than that, thank you very much indeed for watching people tube. I'll see you again very soon for another video. Hope this has been informative and uh, see you again. Goodbye now. Thank you for watching.